I have lived, worked and travelled all over the world, but believe it or not, I've never been to Italy. And somebody has just come up to us and said, if you have a look at a map, Italy looks like a boot kicking an island. I said, don't be so silly. Welcome back, it's Eddie here from Tyneside Life and here I am in Milan. And when I did a video about this, um, when we first found out about being drawn with AC Milan, some people put comments on my video saying, oh, give Milan a miss, it's a shit hole. Are you kidding? This place is absolutely stunning. Don't believe us? Take a look. Fantastic air, so I'm currently more or less in the heart of the city and behind me here, it's the Duomo Cathedral. It's the fifth largest cathedral in the world, the biggest Gothic cathedral in the world. It's absolutely stunning. But did you know they started to build it in the 1300s and finished it in 1965? It took nearly 600 years to build, man. When the Romans come up to Newcastle, it took them six years to build an 83-mile wall. Mind you, I mean, they did subcontract that job to the local Geordies, and that's why it took so quick to build. But yeah, 600 years to build this, mind, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, you can fit nearly 40,000 people inside that church. That's more than the whole of the Sunderland fan base. Not that you'd ever see a Mackham in Milan. Milan, of course, is also famous for two world-class football teams, AC Milan and Internacional Milan. Inter Milan is where you commonly refer it to. But did you know Inter Milan was hatched from the womb of AC Milan? Well, we have to go back a few years because there was an English guy called Henry Kilpin from Nottingham, a textile worker, moved to Milan in 1891 and he formed AC Milan in 1899 by bringing in foreign European players to this newly formed club. So for a few years, everything was fine. But the Italian Football Federation wasn't very happy with all these foreign imports, so put a block on it. So AC Milan spat their dummy out and boycotted that particular season. That caused some internal um, bad feeling and 40 breakaway members found a loophole in that particular law in order to be able to bring in foreign players and formed Inter Milan in 1908. Now to the locals here in Milan, you either support Milan or Inter, and that's how they refer to the two clubs. And they also share the same stadium, the famous San Siro Stadium, the biggest stadium in Italy, holds around 80,000 fans when it's its absolute capacity. So the AC Milan fans, their ultras, are referred to as the Curva Sud, and the Inter fans are the Curva Nord, which basically refers to the south and north ends of the stadium. So for AC Milan, it's fair to say that that particular club are global heavyweights. They've won 49 trophies in their history, 19 league titles. They've won the Champions League seven times, second only behind Forza Real. Milan. Forza Milan. Ah, hello there. <laughs> ah, come here. Uh, hey, come. I don't speak English. Mm, I don't either. Uh, <laughs> Sandro Tonali. Uh, 3-0. 3-0. To Newcastle. Giroud, Giroud, Giroud. <laughs> uh, Giroud. Oh, you're a good player. What about Sandro Tonali? Tonali, uh, very good player. Very, yeah. very, very fort. So they were spot on. AC Milan fans, of course, we have snatched their baby from them. Sandro Tonali. I don't know how he's going to feel um, if he's going to be playing tonight. It must be quite uh, an emotional bit of turmoil for him, but I hope he's playing and I hope he scores a hat-trick. But it's fair to say in terms of their success, 
they've actually had a bit of a barren spell over the past 10 years or so. They've only won, won two trophies. But they won the uh, league title in 21-22 season. But they're still a very, very dangerous outfit. Um, uh, they were beaten in the semi-final of the Champions League to their bit rivals Inter just this year. Um, they've had a good start of the season. They've won three out of their four games. But the last game they played against Inter, they were thrashed 5-1. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for Newcastle. Of course, famous players that AC Milan have as well. You'll recognise Olivier Giroud, dangerous, dangerous centre forward. Christian Pulisic, the American who just went there. And also uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek playing on the right-hand side. Anyway, let's see what some AC Milan fans think of the match tonight. Aldo. Aldo, nice to meet you. I'm Eddie. Nice to meet you too. And, uh, of course, AC Milan are a big club. Very famous, Newcastle United, uh, very small. Yeah, but uh, I think Newcastle is a um, really good team to, to fight together uh, tonight, and it's, um, I think, uh, a, a good match, a good match to, to see and enjoy. How do you feel about Sandro Tonali coming to Newcastle? Uh, so, uh, uh, <laughs> for us, Sandro is a. a uh, Rossonero heart, so if, so if we are really, yeah, so uh, really nice, nice, nice boy, uh, Milan supporter, so it's for, for us, maybe one day come back and uh, enjoy together again uh, the pitch. <laughs> and the score prediction, what do you think the score will be? 2-0 to Newcastle, maybe? Uh, what? Uh, yeah. The result? Ah, the result. Uh, Maybe 1-1. One, one. Oh, wow. Anyway, that's enough about AC Milan. What about Newcastle United? Well, of course, in terms of European competition, we're novices. Our team is quite inexperienced, and Eddie Howe has never been a manager at this level. So it's an unknown territory for us. You could say we're a bit of a wild card, but with wild cards, anything can happen. Of course, we're playing AC Milan, European heavyweights. You'd have to expect that they're probably going to win. But I'm going to the match tonight full of hope that we can cause a real shock and an upset and get a result. But what about team selection for Eddie Howe tonight? Well, that's a bit of a conundrum. He has my forecast. I'm going to go for the same back four. Up front, I'm going to go for Gordon up on the left, Isaac in the middle and Miggy on the right. I'm not so sure about the middle three. We could have Tenali on the right, Bruno in the middle with Anderson on the left-hand side. But I'm going to go for Bruno in the middle Longstaff on the right and Tenali on the left. Anyway, it's time to head down to the canal and see the Toon Army. If you don't want to miss out on the shenanigans that we're going to get up through this afternoon after some cool beers, we the lads. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. <laughs> 